We're getting married. As soon as we find an aisle to walk down. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> well, yeah, of course. But, I mean, we already knew that you guys were getting married. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was already a done deal. Even with everything that went down last night. Well, it's... It's even more of a done deal. Yeah, we're not waiting. We want to get married as soon as possible. Oh, well, I'm so happy for you, honey. <laughs> Isn't it great? We're waiting. Ethan and I, well, we want to... Thank you. For what? Not you, Julian. Now I want to know what's going on with Sheridan and Luis. I'm not sure. I saw them out by the gazebo earlier. And? That's it? You haven't come up with a way to keep them apart? I don't understand. Why don't we just play the tape where Sheridan admits killing Luis's father? Eve Russell got it all out of her under hypnosis, a full confession. This is why I passed you over as heir, Julian. You've never been able to see the big picture. Crane Industries can't afford any more bad publicity. Now think of some way to tear Sheridan and Luis apart, and think of it now. Or else find yourself living with Ethan in the Harmony YMCA. Well, how about anything on the search for Charity Sanders? What? All right, I'll check back in with you later, Mel. Thanks. Is anything wrong? Apparently, Father Lonigan called the Harmony PD and called off the search for Charity. Called it off? Why? Said she's not missing anymore. Well, that's wonderful news. Yeah, well, except for the fact that Miguel hasn't called me, and neither has my mother. And they would have let me know first thing if Charity had turned up. Mm. I don't know, maybe, maybe Charity wandered back home the same way she wandered off. Didn't... Father Lonigan say that evil had something to do with Charity's disappearance? Yeah. My mother said that he was on to something. And Father Lonigan was a powerful priest who, who wouldn't say anything that he didn't truly believe. But why would he, why would evil take Charity? Nah. Nah, she, she was just sleepwalking. Oh. She said, just her. Such a terrible year, especially with her mother dying. I don't think Father Lonigan is far off. Think about what happened just last night. You know, Charity wandering off, Ethan being exposed to Sam Bennett's son, mm. Grace losing her baby. Maybe it could be that evil has come to harmony. Should I stop at the market now or later? later. I need to do a major shop. I'm going to raid the gourmet department because I'm going to make you a five-star meal tonight. All your favorites topped off with my stir-fry because I know you love my stir-fry. <laughs> yeah. Listen, uh, Grace, I have a few days coming. What do you say we take off, we go down to Boston? Stop it. Stop acting like nothing happened. Grace, honey, I'm not. It's just, uh, I want to have a conversation. Well, I don't. Okay. We don't have to have a conversation. Everything is different now. I still love you. All right, that's not different. I love you the way I always have. Do you still love me? Just take me home, Sam. I have this feeling that there is something wrong at home, that there is something wrong with the children. Grace, honey, I told you earlier, if there was something wrong, they, they would have called Sam, us. Sam, just take me right home. I have this almost overwhelming sense that there is an evil presence at our house, and it is after the children. So just take me home, now! Yeah, I can't hold on any longer! You have to! 
to Charity. Hang on. I'm coming, Charity. Don't let go, Charity. Just a little while longer. Miguel! Miguel, help me, Miguel! I can't get through. Miguel, please help me! Okay, I have an idea. Why don't we go upstairs and unhook the ladder and then she'll just fall through the ceiling? No, my child, it doesn't work that way. You're thinking logically, using the physical laws of nature, gravity. But this is unnatural. We're dealing with evil. There are no laws. If we unhook the ladder, Charity will not fall to the ground. The demons will drag her back into the deepest, darkest corners of hell. Miguel! We will never be able to rescue her. Miguel! Hold on, Charity, don't worry. Miguel! Help me! Yes, that's right, priest. As soon as I finish cutting that rope, Charity's gonna be whisked away by the demons into hell. Never! To be seen again. <laughs> I would hold the hand of the one who could leave me places and kiss the lips of the one who could sing so sweet. And I would fly on the wings of the bird I knew could take me high. Have you told Ethan yet? That you knew he was Chief Bennett's son and that you scanned the letter from his mom to Chief Bennett into your computer? No, not yet. Look, I don't want to sound like a broken record here, okay? But I think keeping it from him is a big mistake. But Chad, the tabloid couldn't have gotten the information from me. There is no way that could have happened. But the tabloid did get the paper, Teresa. I have no idea how. Yeah, the letter was in my computer, but that's all I know. So tell Ethan that. I will. After we're married. But there's too much going on right now. So many things that we have to deal with. All right, fine. We're just saying, be careful. You don't want the same thing to happen to you and Ethan that happened to Chief and Mrs. Bennett. Chief Bennett kept his relationship with Ethan's mom a secret from his wife for all those years. And now they got themselves nothing but grief. I'm sorry. So did you... did you ask her? I was waiting for you. Ask me what? If you'll be my maid of honor. <laughs> I would be so thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, what you guys gonna do for your honeymoon? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. Wish I knew. Wish I knew a lot of things. We were gonna stay and how? I don't even have a job. Ethan, we're gonna be fine. We'll live on love. I, I don't need a, a fancy honeymoon or a big house or any of those expensive things. But you deserve them. You know, I just wish that you didn't have to give back the brooch and the pearls. I didn't mind, really. Oh, you had to give those things back? The Crane family heirlooms. Since I'm not a crane. Those things don't matter to me. Yes, but the engagement ring mattered to you. Look, I know it hurt to give it back. You had to give back the engagement ring, too? Julia, Mr. Crane. You said I bought it with Crane money. Man, that is messed up. Teresa, I'm sorry. But I swear I'm gonna buy you another engagement ring. I'll buy you anything you want. But I already have what I want and ask for money to come live on love. I mean, once I get back on my feet, we'll be fine. We will be better than fine. Our life is going to be so sweet. No, our love is going to last forever because we trust each other. No, we, we'll never keep secrets from each other. That's why love is going to last. There'll be no secrets or lies between us. Chief Bennett's wife probably thought the same thing. We're gonna be home soon. I know where we are, sir. Well, I wish I did. I mean, I, I wish I knew what you were really feeling, thinking. 
Grace, when I said I loved you earlier, you didn't answer me. Now I have to know. Do you still love me? I, I don't know how to answer that, Sam. I don't know what to say. I, I still can't believe that you lied to me. That you kept terrible secrets from me, and yet you did. I was wrong. I... I was wrong. I know. What I don't know is how I'm gonna make it up to you. I'd do anything. But there's nothing you can do. You can't go back in time. You can't take back your lies. You can't give my baby back to me. Dear God, I would do anything. But you can't do anything. That's the point. And I don't know if I will ever feel about you the way I used to. You were my... You were my knight in shining armor. You were my protector. That's why I didn't tell you about Ivy, because I wanted to protect you. Well, I could see how you could talk yourself into believing that. I didn't talk myself into it. I just thought it was best. Look, it doesn't matter. It's done. And as far as trusting you goes... It'll take time. I know. I don't want to talk about it. All I want to do is get back to my children and make sure they're all right. Please, Grace. Look, don't shut me out like this. Sam, I just, I need, I need time to think. I need time with my children. I have this. What? I, I, don't, I don't know. It's more than a feeling. I, I have this sense that. I am afraid that the same evil that crept into our marriage is trying to take over our children's lives. What's this thing made of? Titanium? Ooh. That's better. Yes. I'm almost through now. It won't be long. Sick transit charity. <laughs> Miguel, help me! Jerry, I'm coming! No! no! I'm okay, Mama. Okay. Okay. The demons. Did they rush out of the closet? You saw it. How did they take charity? Come on, Charity, reach! Reach, you can do it! Come on! Okay, I can see those wheels turning in your little van. You're thinking, what's going to happen when Charity comes back and tells everyone that you helped me pull her into hell? Oh, how are you going to explain that little number? <laughs> Tis a puzzlement. Methinks you won't have to. Because Charity isn't coming back. Because once I saw through this rope, Charity will be damned to hell for all eternity. <laughs> okay, so why are we all just standing around here? Let's sit down and have some nice coffee. Hey, coming right up. As a matter of fact, I just made a fresh pot. Cool. Mm, I'll get it. Just um, sit down. Hang out with your friends. Okay. Right. Well, thanks, Beth. <laughs> Oh, thanks, dude. Uh, Ethan, I'm sorry about what happened, but um, Sam Bennett is a wonderful man. So I've been told. Chad, I've got everything. Just take as long as you need, okay? All right. Yo, I'll you one. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have got it. I got what? Your honeymoon. You guys can stay at my parents' cabin by the lake. Oh, okay, it's nothing like the crane cabin, but it is really nice. And it'll be all yours. No one is gonna bother oh you up gosh. there. Hey, that sounds great to me. You guys will have a wonderful time. Are you sure it'd be okay with your mom and dad? Oh, come on, are you kidding? You're my best friend. My parents will not care at all. It'll be great. Well, what do you think? Well, 
Well, I, um, it's it's very kind to, to offer, Whitney. I appreciate it. But I don't know if it's right for me to start daydreaming about honeymoons when there's a reality I have to deal with, and that, that's that I'm jobless. You know, I'm, I think I'm gonna head over to the magazine stand, check out the Boston Lawyer, see if there's any openings. So, um, do you have any plans for the wedding or anything? Are you guys just gonna wing it or what? Okay, the only thing I know for sure uh -huh. is that you are gonna be my maid of honor. Of course. And I'm gonna be wearing Mrs. Crane's dress. Ivy's dress, yes, really? Yes, the one that she wore when she married Julian. She's given it to me. And Mom and I are gonna make another dress. Yo, excuse me a minute, I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Hey, what you getting there, man? Oh, just a few magazines. And I figure it's gonna be a while before I find a job, so I figured I'd catch up on some SI Newsweek. Hmm. Uh, any idea how much that stat costs? Yo, Ethan, just so you know, you about to spend more on those magazines than I make in a whole day. You serious? Check the prices, man. Well, I, I mean, I never had to. I never really thought about how, how much things cost. I mean, whenever I wanted something, I just charged it. I mean, cranes don't carry any cash. Well, look, man, I don't want to upset you by reminding you of something you already know, but you're not a crane anymore. And more importantly, you're about to get married, man. So if I was you, I'd start caring a lot about how much things cost. Because whether you like it or not, you're down here with us regular people now. And no offense, but down here... Money don't grow on trees. I've racked my brain, Father. Well, that must have taken a good two seconds. The only thing I can think of to drive Louise and Sheridan apart is to play the tape for Louise. We can't. Think. Louise is a cop. He bleeds Harmony P.D. Blue. No matter what his feelings for Sheridan, he'd be compelled to arrest her as a murderer, and the story would spread all over the world. <sighs> Well, that didn't seem to matter when you were going to play the tape at the party. Well, that was before Ivy's secret came out. The financial markets are still reeling from the bombshell that Ethan isn't your son. And don't you read the business section anymore? Frankly, Father, I'm still reeling myself. Well, all I care about is the price of Crane stock. And playing that tape would be like dropping another bomb. The Crane name would be smeared again, and Crane industry stock would plummet losing billions of dollars for the family. It could even cause a worldwide market collapse. So what do we do? What we have to do is think of some other way of keeping Sheridan and Louise apart, and it must be done immediately, before Louise starts poking around the Crane property, trying to dig up Crane's secrets. I hardly need remind you what is hidden in our pasts, Julian. What if Louise happened upon that little tidbit? Disaster. You'd be spending the rest of your life behind bars. So get on the stick and come up with a plan. The more you lollygag, the greater the chance you'll be wearing one of those fetching orange jumpsuits. Evil didn't come to harmony. People have just made lousy choices. Maybe you're right. Look, Ivy keeping the secret that Ethan was Sam's son? It's a bad choice. And Sam, as much as I respect him, you know, not telling Grace that he had a pass with Ivy, I mean, it's not like it was, was an ongoing thing. He definitely should have told her. Yeah, and if he had, then maybe the news about Ethan wouldn't have hit Grace so hard. And then she wouldn't have fallen down the stairs and... And then she wouldn't have fallen down the stairs and... lost her baby. Yeah. And then... there's Charity sleepwalking. Miguel's told me that, that that's happened a couple times. Well, maybe she has emotional problems that she needs to work through. Maybe. You know what the real problem now is, is people keeping secrets. It's like a domino effect, and sooner or later, everyone's going to get hit. Not us. <laughs> we don't have any secrets, not anymore. The one secret we did have turned out to be just a crazy nightmare. After Eve hypnotized me, we realized it wasn't true, that I didn't kill your father. 
No dominoes are gonna fall on us. Nothing's gonna get between our relationship. You're thinking about your father, aren't you? I'm so sorry. I, I shouldn't have mentioned my no, no, nightmare. No, no, it's okay. Look, Sheridan, I know that you didn't have anything to do with my father's disappearance. But someone did, and I'm gonna find out who it was. I still think it was Julian or Alistair, or even both of them. And one of these days, I'm gonna prove it, if it's the last thing that I do. Charity, you have to reach out your hand! I can't! Yes, you can! Come on, swing towards me on the ladder and reach out your arm! That's right, Charity! A little more! Wait! I've got to get used to a whole new way of life. Yo, you need any help? I'll be right there for you. Cause hey, I've been there and done that. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. All right, hey, come on, man. Let's uh, put these magazines back. <laughs> so have you told Luis yet? Well, he knows. He was there when Ethan and I decided. No, he wasn't too happy about it. He thinks that, that we're foolish to get married now with Ethan having no money or no job. But I told him that's how Mama and Papa started. I and mean, they struggled when they first got married. And now, Mama says that was the best, the happiest time of their lives. One thing I have to do right away is uh, clean up my office. I think I'm gonna head over to Crane Industries. What? Have you ever seen your office? Well, it's, it's not my office anymore, but if you wanna come, I could sure use the help. And hey, the more help, the merrier. I'm just gonna pick up some personal things. Well, I wouldn't mind helping. No well, I just gotta check with Beth, but uh, yeah, I think it'll be cool. All right, well, uh, I'll get the car. We'll meet you outside. All right. You know, Chad, I'm acting happy for Teresa, but I am so worried about them. I mean, not only because Teresa's keeping a secret from Ethan, but with Ethan having no money, no job, how are they supposed to live? Teresa, of course, thinks love is enough. I mean, being in love is great and all, but, you know, I don't know. I mean, you gotta eat. Well, he is a lawyer. I mean, you think he's got a job somewhere, right? Yeah, and I'm sure he'll find a good one, too, somewhere. But while he's waiting, he's gonna have to cut back on his lifestyle, I know that. I mean, see that big stack of magazines he's trying to buy just now? Must have been worth, like, $50. Uh-uh, nah, living large is definitely out. That boy's gonna have to start, uh, living on a budget. Can you imagine living on unlimited money? Yeah, well, I just hope he learns how to live like us regular people, that's all. Because if he doesn't, it's going to be rough on his marriage. And having nothing in a marriage financially usually means tension. I just hope that doesn't destroy Ethan and Teresa before they even have a chance to just make a go of it. Okay, we're here. See, there's nothing wrong at the house. It's fine. Calm. I'm still getting strong vibes. It, it's just like a sense that the house is like our marriage. On the outside, that is fine, but on the inside, it's just a sham. Grace, there's nothing wrong with our marriage. It's filled with lies and deceit. It'll be fine. If you'll let us be. Bon voyage, Charity. I so hate to see you go. <laughs> Well, it's over. My work here is done. And I no longer need this portal to hell. <sighs> Hellfire and demons, evil, so mean, be gone from this house. I am now queen. <laughs> No, Journey, come back! What's happening? Would someone please tell me what's... The cloud! It's what? disappearing! The door's the hell of closing! No! Look out! Get out! No. What happened? I don't know. I thought it was secure.
Joker! Look! What is it, Reese? The rope's been cut. Evil. The evil in this house cut that rope. Daddy! Come back! Call your sweetheart all you want, Miguel. She's never coming back. Never! <laughs> Julian Crane facing a tricky side hiller to close out his match against Tiger and walk home the title of world's greatest golfer. Crowd hushes in anticipation. Crane squints, focuses. Among other things, you need to work on your phone answering technique. People don't appreciate being barked at. I certainly don't. <clears throat> Sorry, Father. You will be if you haven't come up with a scheme to split up Luis and Sheridan. Well, I'm working on that, Father. Uh, kicking around a few ideas. Nothing concrete, though, yet. Uh, nothing I'd like to lay out for you. I suggest you spend less time playing with your putter and more time dealing with the problems facing this family. The one thing I am dealing with is that little secret that's out in the gazebo. I'm going out there as soon as we hang up, take it straight over to the Crane Archives, lock it away with the other family secrets. You've always been a step behind, Julian, a beat late. But what do you mean, Father? I'm right on top of this. There's nothing for Louise to find. All our secrets are over at Crane Industries, locked away in the archives room. We're not going to play the tape for Louise. We'll just make sure there's nothing for him to discover. But what if there is, Julian? What if there's something you've overlooked? The same way you overlooked the fact that Ethan might fall madly in love with Teresa. No one anticipated Do that. Do you not grasp the gravity of the situation? Do you not realize that if we don't figure out a way to break up Luis and Sheridan, the entire Crane Empire will be destroyed? If there's anything that I can do to help you find out if my family had something to do with something, your father's... Something? Something to do with it? They did it, Sheridan. I know it in my gut. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just don't think that Julian and Alistair can... Well, I do think. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just trying to help you. Last time you offered, we ended up in a dead end. I was just thinking about that, too. My father was killed, and somebody killed him. If he's alive, then, then somebody knows where he's being kept. We just have to keep digging. It'll turn up. The truth is out there. We just have to find a way to get to it. Yeah. Well, we can take a walk and get some fresh air, clear our heads, so we can think of somewhere to start. I'll get our coats. Yeah. Where are you, Papa? We went down all those years ago. What happened to you? Jerry! Reese was right. The rope was cut. And the rope is still tied to Charity's bed. Bed. The portal to hell is closed, but I still sense evil in this house. Sounded like Miguel. I told you something was wrong at home. I told you. What is this? Miguel? What's going Please. on? Oh, dear God. Oh, I... Sweetheart. Poor, what the hell happened in here? Uh, You're exactly right, Sam. Hell happened in here. You're all right, sweetheart. Okay? I'm okay, Mom. Good baby. Charity? Where's Charity? Where's my niece? Somebody answer me! Grace, dear, this is going to be hard to accept. Perhaps even harder to understand. Uh, you're frightening me, Father. There is a presence in this house. A presence of evil. Where is Charity? Tell me. I demand you tell me! Shut up! I want to know where Charity is, Father Elinor, and I want to know now! Mm. 
It's horrible. She's in hell. What? Charity, we saw her. She's in hell. No. I can't believe it worked. I mean, I, I felt sure that the code would have changed since father and grandfather. <sighs> Tough to break old habits. It's gonna take a while before I figure out who I am and who they are. Because I'm certainly not a crane. Why don't we go in? Mr. Crane, good to see you. It's been a couple of days, sir. Yes, Lynn, it's good to see you. Um, these are my friends. I was just going to show them around. Yes, sir. If you need anything, please. All right, I'll just give you a buzz. Thanks. I guess he hasn't heard the news yet. Why don't we go to my office? That's the Crane Family Archives. It houses all the family's personal documents, important business records, and um, anything else Julian and Alistair want under lock and key. Can we take a look in there? I, I mean, we're not going to touch anything. I don't think it would hurt anything, but I seriously doubt this card has access. Uh, I'm sure Julian and Alistair have recoded this. I mean, this is Sanctum Sanctorium, and I wasn't even allowed access until I was named the heir. Well, I guess we can give it a shot. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I guess they recoded. believe what I just heard. Dear God, no. Please. Pilar. I'm sorry, Grace, but it's true. I saw it with my own eyes. Are you telling me your son went into hell after charity? Why didn't somebody call us and tell us what was going on? Well, I guess we thought you had enough to deal with, you know, with you losing... with your accident. Fires of hell in a closet? Charity being whisked away by demons? Come on, it's not possible. Something else is going on here. No, Dad, there isn't. I mean, we all saw the same thing. Everything we saw happened. We all saw the same thing, Chief Dennett. Hard as it is to believe, Sam, it happened the way they said. Well, look, I'm sorry, Father. But it's just such an incredible story. Sam. And... told you at the hospital that there was something going on here and you didn't believe me. You wouldn't let me leave when I wanted to. I had no idea. But I did! If you had believed me, maybe we could have gotten here sooner and helped Charity and saved her. Look, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, maybe it's just another mass hallucination. No. Evil was in this house. And it took my Charity. First it took my baby. And then it took my niece. I blame you, Sam, for lying to me, for not taking me home when I wanted to go. I lost two children today, and it is your fault. It is all your fault. I certainly do grasp the gravity of the situation, Father. As I said, all of our secrets are sealed in the Crane archives, a vault that cannot be opened. There's no possible way, Luis... I remember you telling me there was no possible way Ethan and Teresa would ever get together. No possible way Sheridan and Luis would become a couple. So you'll forgive my skepticism when it comes to your no possible ways. 
Now I want this taken care of immediately. Sheridan and Luis are to be destroyed. You always get what you want, don't you, Father? Yes, we'll destroy them, Father. I don't know how yet, but we will. Sheridan and Luis are doomed. <laughs> well, who would know what happened to my father? Who could tell us the truth? Of course. I know who can tell us the truth. Who is it? I am sorry, Grace. I'm sorry, period. It's not enough, Sam. It's not nearly enough. Father Lonigan. Yes, sir. I'm still trying to make sense of what happened here. Has anything else been done to try to find Charity? There is nothing else to be done. Charity is in hell. Father Lonigan, look, I know you're convinced that's where she is. I know you're all convinced that you saw her in hellfire. But what if you didn't? What if she just wandered off? I recall Luis saying the same thing, and he launched an all-out search party. No one saw a sign of her. Well, at least they're out there looking. Not anymore. I called off the search. What? Chief Bennett, we know where Charity is. I was there with her. In hell. I still sense the evil. Evil is nearby. Very nearby. You're right, priest. I'm right here. The queen of evil is nearby. <laughs> Is making its presence known. Evil is here. <laughs> <laughs>